these things that I went to prison for when I was 17 was things that happened when I was 15. He's grabbed me by the air and he's punching me in the jaw. On the fourth one, I felt my jaw click. I'm sorry, there's levels to this shit. One more bang, he's swinging my jaw. So then I've smashed him with a glass. He's knocked out. Brittany, I'm not going to lie to you. If he would have died, I could have got you eight years for manslaughter. So now you're trying to make me feel like I wish I had more intention. They tried to manipulate the whole thing and make me look like I'm an absolute psycho that tried to kill the geezer. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got a girl. Yeah, a girl. <laughs> Nia Tui. Welcome to the show. That's me. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. I think everyone knows who you are anyway. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in probably every newspaper, every magazine right now. Yeah. Well, a year ago. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit. Why are you on the Blue Tick Show? What's, what's your story? Uh, basically, I'm here because I went away for a very long time. Um, I've got 12 years for... Um, glassing somebody ultimately it started off as a self-defense it wasn't kind of perceived that way in court um the evidence and stuff like that it was kind of misled i ended up getting 12 years for the for the situation and um, for what happened ultimately and then um i tried to like kind of protest it um, being a girl and getting 12 years, like you hear about men getting listen 12 years is a big stretch yeah, anyway no it for, is for a man or woman yeah like how the fuck did you feel when that happened? Oh my god, um, I don't know. You know when you have, can't even. Did you ever go to prison before that? I'd been prison before that when I was you younger. Did, yeah? yeah, not for too long. I think that's one of the reasons why I did end up getting so long, um, because it was kind of like I've got previous. I'm, I'm not an angel. I've done some crazy stuff when I was young. I had a kind of crazy lifestyle, and then. Um, this just was just unfortunate and it just it just smashed me to bits to be honest with you first of all for a good couple of years well listen before we jump into the nitty and gritty of why you got 12 years inside let's throw it a little bit back to your childhood i like yeah. to start off with what turned you into the person you are today yeah talk to us a little bit of your childhood where was you from what was your upbringing like um i grew up in um essex yeah I can tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i know i can't get away from it <laughs> and uh yeah, it wasn't. It was a bit difficult, kind of growing up. My dad was kind of on drugs, in and out of prison. Um, got three older brothers. My mum done her best. Um, I was the youngest. Um, I've also got. I wasn't diagnosed till I was twenty eight, but I've also got extreme ADHD um, that wasn't um, diagnosed till my later life That's when late, I was in prison. Yeah, so I kind of grew up erratic, you know, yeah. I knew that I was different. I knew that my behaviors, my thought process, all these things were, were different and I out of kind of control in ways and I didn't understand it. So I kind of had a crazy kind of life lifestyle. I was on the roads. I was like trying to make money. Was I you was, getting in trouble at a young age? Yeah, I was getting in trouble from young. I started off about 13, nicking cars. Nicking cars nicking at 13? Cars, just doing kind of, just wild child, to be honest. I was like, you know, wasn't really disciplined. I was kind of just left to my own devices, just trying to, just trying to survive, really. And what was the f first time you were in prison? What age was that? Um, day before my 18th birthday. Love so it. I woke up, my first day in prison, 18th birthday. I was like, woo! This is but, great but, to be 18, isn't I know, it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, happy birthday. No, I'm joking. But the one good thing about it was, um, obviously I was 17, so I went to juvie. So then on my... I've heard that's worse, though. People have told me that that's... It's a bit wild, but obviously I was only there for one day. But oh, I remember when I... Oh, shit, yeah. But when I'd obviously first got there that night, all I can hear is, who's that? Yo, new girl, new girl, who's that? I thought, oh my God, because they're youngsters and they're wild. But then it was my, on my first day when I woke up on my birthday, the one thing I was glad about was that um, they was moving me to the main prison, obviously the adult prison. So then I got a pack of tobacco because I was <laughs> legit. So I was like, yeah, mate, let's go. <laughs> so, but being 17 how did your mum cope with you going to prison because obviously uh, you're her daughter you're her world I'm guessing at that age it's a bit different what was it like uh, mine and my mum's relationship growing up was kind of a bit um, hit and miss yeah okay yeah. Right, fair enough so it was kind of I'd, I'd moved out from a young age as well so I was kind of living by myself um, involved in all this kind of crazy lifestyle so it was kind of like and your older brothers were you close with any of them um, I was kind of, I was kind of close with them, but I just felt that they was like, um, people were on to me a lot. You know what I mean? I As wonder you... why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people were on to me a lot, so I was just kind of, just kind of, just swerve everyone really, and just, just lost in it, just lost in this world of madness. 
And what were your friends? Was were they naughty and getting in trouble, or was it just you on your ones going out causing a madness? A, a lot of my friends was, um, and that was kind of what I was caught up in. But then when I was um, fifteen, I got into a relationship, and it was really violent, toxic. Yeah, it was, it was really bad. And then I ended up like nearly dying in hospital. Oh wow! So then I moved away on my own because um, I had to kind of get away from him, all this kind of crazy stuff. So then I've moved away by myself when I was 17. And then um, I was working, I was in college. I was really, you know, just trying my best to just do my own thing, do my thing, get away from it all. Then I'd got arrested for things that, these things that I went to prison for when I was 17 was things that happened when I was 15. But because I'd moved areas, the old bill. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't find me for years. I didn't even know they was looking for so me. So the past just basically caught up on you. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and when you're in that kind of game and it's, it's, it's hard to get out of it. What's going on, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere. And make sure you give us a five-star review on Spotify. Thank you. So look, people obviously watched the opening line of this and heard you went to prison for 12 years. Yeah. So let's dive into that. What in the world happened that day? So basically, I was out on St. Patrick's Day. Nice. Um, yeah, lovely. Getting, I'm half getting Irish. smashed. Yeah, you know that. I had a big Guinness out on. I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then there was this group of um, people come in. They're like, oh, Nia, we know you. I'm like, who don't? Yeah. You know, let's have a shot. So he's having a laugh. And then... Um, the next thing, basically, I've gone down to the toilet. As I've gone to, I, I, basically, I'm out with my friend. She's an absolute nightmare. If you've watched my other podcast, you'll kind of know the details. But um, didn't want to go out of there. She's a nightmare. She pulled on my heartstrings. Neo, you all I've got. I'm such a, as much as people can think what they like about me, I have got a really big heart. And uh, that's one of the, some people say it's my biggest weakness. But then on the other hand, I feel like it's, my best quality yeah. do you know what I mean and it's kind of a, a catch 22 um, so I've went out with her we're in the bar um, I've gone down to the toilet as I've gone down to the toilet I've come back up bouncers are pulling everybody apart yeah. um, and then I don't know what's going on they've thrown this group out as they've thrown this group out about five minutes later I've left as I've left I'm sitting outside on the bench outside the bar with my friend waiting for someone to pick me up and then this group, the group have come storming back round the corner. Ultimately, I'm not thinking anything of it. So you don't even know what's happened at this point. Well, just, you just been, everyone's been thrown out. You're just basically yeah. getting on with your evening. And, and that's the end of it. It's a wrap. We're going yeah. home now. They've come up and then this guy, he's shouting and screaming at my friend that's sitting next to me. She's about two foot in a risen, isn't she? She's about that big. You could put your arm yeah. on her, bless her. He's shouting and screaming at her. I've stood up, stood in front of her. I said, mate, leave it. We've all been kicked out. It's the end of it. I don't even know what's going on. She's saying nothing's happened, nothing's happened whatever yeah, yeah. and then the next thing he's grabbed me by the air and he's punching me in the jaw the guy bang bang i'm just firming it listen i've got three older brothers man they're boxes i'm tough yeah. you know what i mean yeah so i'm just firming it and ultimately i don't want to go away and i know how unlucky i am so i'm just firming it firming it on the fourth one i felt my jaw click i'm sorry there's levels to this shit one more bang he's swinging my jaw like that can't happen so then i've smashed him with a glass he's knocked out People above the flats have called the police saying a female's being attacked. I went really by the time they've got there, the female, me, is gone and he's on the floor. Then the whole game's changed, you know? It's like, right, wow. we've called because a female's being attacked. Now there's a man on the floor, where's the female? Like, madness. I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? Like, how has this happened? So you've heard police are there now. Police are looking for you, obviously. Yeah. So you're thinking, what the fuck? I've done nothing wrong. Yeah. Like, I've just defended myself, yeah, basically. Yeah, for real. Wow. Yeah. What a joke. I know, it's crazy. So what actually happened to him? Because obviously, you got 12 years. Yeah, but... he had a three centimetre cut there on his forehead. And they the gave judge, you 12 years for that. The judge said to me, even though... The judge said to me, my starting... Basically, the judge said, I'm putting this in a category two, which is five to eight years. Okay. They said, but we have to do a rapport assessment, which is basically assessment which is done by probation to assess your level of dangerousness. If it comes back that you're dangerous, they was then looking to give me um, EPP. Okay. So it's basically, she'd, she was a bitch. So she'd give me the max, but then give me EPP, so which means I'd have to do uh, three quarters of the sentence. Probation come back and said, this girl is not dangerous. Yeah, she's done some, you know, she's yeah. she has got previous offences. This is clear that this is self-defence. And we don't believe Neary's dangerous and I think you should give her a suspended sentence. 
The judge was there reading out the report in the court and she said, that's ridiculous. I'm now moving, knowing she can't give me EPP because I've not come back as dangerous. She said, I'm now putting this in category one, 15 to 19 years. I'm like One that. second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Hold on. Let's I'm rewind. I'm looking behind me, thinking that she's got to be talking to someone else. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help so let's just rewind this this guy's punched you in the face four times yeah you've smacked him over the head yeah yeah you've left it yeah you haven't smashed him up after no you've I'm smacked done. him over and left yeah and you got sentenced to 12 years in prison yeah. she went i'm starting at 10 years she went she went 15 to 19 years but because his injuries was not serious i'm gonna give you 12 years take her down you've done nothing wrong if you and you see all my um in my um link tree in my bio on my TikTok, Nia921. You can see all the links in there. I went mad in the call. One second, you've done nothing wrong. Like me as an outsider, yeah, I've just yeah. met you. Literally, yeah. I've just met you. Yeah. If I was stood in court and I heard that story, I'd say, yeah, girl, what? For real. I was in the box. And I'm guessing the man was bigger than you? About the same size, I'm not gonna lie, it was about the same size. I stood in that box and I said to the judge, and it was like I was If it was the other way show. around, that would have been like- Exactly. Yeah. I stood in that box and I said to the judge, the jury, everyone, I said, right, watch the CCTV. I made them stop the CCTV every single punch and say to my virus. So you stop. can see it all on CCTV? Did everyone see that? You see that? Everyone see that? Stop every single punch. And then I said, what would you do if that was your daughter or your sister in that situation? Do you think she deserved to go to prison for then, do it, for then hitting him with that glass and knocking him out? They went to me, Nia. If you didn't hit him with, I said, what would happen if I never hit him with that glass? They said, you would have been the one that ended up on the floor and he would have been the one that ended up in prison. They said, you was conscious when you had the glass in your hand and you hit him. Therefore, the only intention you could have had was to cause him serious wounding with intent. I but said, you what? Had, you had the glass in your hand. It was, a, I'm guessing, yeah. a drink. Yeah. Yeah. So you're stood there drinking a drink. Geezer comes over, punches you in the head exactly. and you, you hit I've over hit the head. I've hit out with my glass, yeah. It's the first thing that's in your hand. If you exactly. didn't have a glass, you would have punched him. Exactly. And you got 12 years. Exactly, yeah. And they tried to make out I was lucky for getting 12. Got down to the, um, when we got down to the cells after my barrister's come down, I can't believe it. My barrister's told me the whole way, Neil, you go not guilty the whole way, you're not guilty. This is clear, this is self-defense, Neil, you're not guilty the whole way. I was scared because I got previous. I said to my boss, I'm scared. I want to try and accept a lower charge and do a couple of years and just call it a day because I'm nervous because they'll pull me apart up there. They went, Nia, you're not guilty the whole way. I remember looking in his eye and he went, trust me, you're not guilty. I shook his hand. When this has happened, they've come back down to the cells. I've said to him, I'm cracking up. I've said, how has this happened? He went, Nia, I'm not going to lie to you. If he would have died, I could have got you eight years for manslaughter. I went, what? Are you having a laugh? So now you're trying to make me feel like... I wish I had more intention. I wish I fucking done him. I'm not, yeah. I thought, this gaff's fucked. I always knew the system was fucked, but it weren't until that case and all that happened to me, I realised the actual levels. That's why I want to make noise. That's why I do the things that I do, because it's just the injustice is just so fucking messed up. There's so many people lost in the system and it's, you know, for, for things that ultimately they don't deserve, you know? Yeah, and no, females are, are treated so... Females are treated so harshly and so, you know, they make examples so much of females and, you know, I, I, it's, it ruins, ruins lives, it ruins families. It's like people don't get to the root of this thing. Like, how was this happened? Yeah, no, I, listen, even me, I never knew that was the whole story. Like, yeah. you told me a little bit before, I never knew that that was it. Yeah, yeah. That's fucked. I know. And what was prison like? Because obviously, what age was you when you went? 23. Young. I'm 31 now. He got out last year. What was it like, first few days in prison? First few days in prison, it was like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. My head was fucking shot to bits. And especially when you got your barrister telling you you're not guilty, yeah. you're not, not suspended, yeah. sentence, sentence, and you're yeah. now preparing yourself. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going out. I'm going, I'm going out. out. Yeah. Every noise I heard, every key that I heard jingle, I thought, yeah, they're coming for me. Mate. I'm off. Swear to God. 
and then it just never happened. So then basically I went for an appeal and um, you only get, you get the chance of one appeal. Okay. If your appeal fails and it's rejected and you appeal again, you have to pay private and there's chance of risk of you getting more time. I got rejected on my first appeal. I didn't give a shit. But what did you I get rejected for? Do they give you a reason or? The, they they said say? that the it was a long sentence, but they said, yes, the sentence is long, but it's, granted. it's justified. So then I've paid private. Yeah, I'm like, fuck this. I'm risking now getting more time and I'm going to pay private and I'm going to go for this again because this is my life. This is my yeah. whole 20s. This, Everything. A, this, is, this ain't happening. Like, I'm, not, I'm not leaving it like that, laying down for six years. For that's what? A, that's, not, that's a joke. You know? It's, I'm not... Like, it's, it's, a, it's fucking messed up. So then what happened was... The re when the reality hit was I'd pay private, I looked for a good, really good solicitor that was um, like the shit in yeah. appeals, found them and then they've put all the paperwork and stuff together and I finally, I've got to appeal court, so I've finally got there. So now I'm buzzing. No, I've got the date. How long was this after? This, after. Was, this was two two years in. Oh, so two, two and a half years So you've done still in. a long time, in. Yeah, you? I've done a little bit, but I know I'm getting out now. I've finally got to the appeal court and I'm like, it's, and then I remember my mum saying to me one day, and when I when I should, I'd been told that I'd got the date, I remember I was so overwhelmed with joy. I was buzzing. I thought, yes, like finally, you know, like f things do come out in the wash. Like I'm gonna get out of here. And then my mum says to me, Nia, you do know not everything comes out in the wash. You know, you may have to do all these years. And my head could not comprehend that. No matter who said it or what, there's no way I'm getting my head around that for what? Yeah, I've done nothing nah. wrong. That's self defence. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving exactly. today. I'm leaving today. I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight. And then. Um, I got the date for the appeal call and then I got contacted. I was in style in Manchester in the block. I got contacted while I was in there saying um, that the appeal had not gone through. So I'm my head shot to bits now. Why has my appeal not gone through? In the sense as you, but you have to go to court for your appeal, no? I don't go. My barrister okay. has to go. They put through paperwork. Then you have a barrister there for representation. So I'm really fight your appeal. My papers and everything had got there to the appeal court. The barrister never turned up. So I've got my family trying to find, like doing all this research, trying to find where's this guy. Ultimately, we've paid him. The company doesn't know where he's got, doesn't know anything. He took my money, he's disappeared. That was when it fucking hit me. Nia, there's yes. a reason you need to be here for all these years. You may not know it now, but one day it's going to make sense. So I, that's when I flipped the script and I said to myself, I've got to make sure that I use these time wisely to make sure I get out of here the best person I ever could have been if I had these years in society. Because ultimately, there's a higher purpose as to why I need to be here. 100%. There's you always know? a reason. Yeah. There's always a reason. And prison life, what was it like? Wild, man. Because I listen, I genuinely, I know it sounds so crazy. I've never spoken to a girl who's been in prison. Oh, really? I've never sat opposite someone who's been in prison. So obviously, like, let me just sit over <laughs> here. <laughs> but no, I'm but on easy. A, on, on right. a serious, like, like, what was it like? Is it as bad as everyone says? It's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, Is it that bad? There's big parties. There's loads oh, really? of parties. There's loads of, there's loads of drama. It's always about drugs. Oh, I'm really probably the same in men's. Drugs, money. And relationships is the worst thing. Really? The worst thing in female prisons is relationships. That's my, they'll be with one girl, seeing another girl. It's crazy, non-stop, like just war. <laughs> and I can't cope, I've got three other brothers. I've grown up with boys, yeah. you know what I mean? So being around all these females, was it, it was foreign to me. Like I'm not kind of, I've got girlfriends and stuff, but I'm not really kind of used to Having, spending yeah, loads yeah. of time with, with women. It was a bit, it was hard for me to kind of adjust. Um, Did you get in any trouble inside? Loads, first of all, for the good first couple of years, I, I went, off, off the, the rails. rails. I was doing. I was going to jails all over the country, doing protests, getting Serious? on tables, doing fucking protests, selling drugs, bones, everything on absolute smoke. Like, because I felt so angry. Yeah, you were pissed at, at the, the system. system. I was pissed. Yeah, and I thought, no, I'm gonna make my bread off you. I'm gonna make your life hell. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? For every minute you're having off me, I'm making noise. Like, I'm not doing it quietly. Like, this is this is messed up. Do you know what I mean? And there's. Obviously, one thing that sticks out when you was in prison, you've done something that extended your time. Yeah, yeah. Talk to us. So basically, they put me on, when I first went away, they put, I was in Holloway. And then uh, I'm thinking I'm getting out, this is all messed up. But I'm still really angry and I'm bitter and ultimately I've been beaten up. I, I just can't believe any of it. I, I, even going back to it, it just don't make sense. Like all the exactly. viewers watching here, like 
it doesn't make sense. Like, I'm not even sitting here because I'm, I know you now. I'm trying to be on your like side and agree yeah. with you. If someone genuinely told me your situation and said, this is what happened. Yeah. What do you think yeah. the outcome is? I'd be they like, tried to manipulate the whole thing. Manipulate they, they, they tried to manipulate the whole thing and make me look like I'm an absolute psycho that tried to kill the geezer. But not at one point in any of the articles, I'm in the Sun, I'm in the Irish Mirror, I'm in the Echo in Liverpool, I'm in the Daily Mail, the Guardian, everywhere. Mm. Not one, in not one article is it mentioned how he hit me four times first. You know? It's like, a joke. It's actually a joke. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So I was really angry when I was in prison, ultimately, at the start. And then they were shutting Holloway down. So they were starting wing by wing from the bottom, moving people up, clearing people out to other jails. After a couple of weeks, I've ended up right on the top, A5. It's a life of wing. And I mean, it's different kind of breeds. Yeah, it's full of nutters. Like, different kind. I'm, I know jail, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been around certain kind of people through life and stuff like that, and I think don't really phase me. But when you're up there, mate... Is it that bad, honestly? Wow, yeah. Different kind of breeds. Like, you've got women in there that have killed ch kids. Yeah, you know, you've fucked. got you got women in there that have abused babies sexually, stuff like that. I've said to the, I've said to the governor, listen, you got I need, I need to get off here. You've got two weeks, and you need to get me off here. So Neil will try our best, but I don't know what it can do. Got to two weeks, said to my guy, and they said, no, you got to stay here. I said, right, that's it, it's a wrap. You're either moving me or I'm getting moved, whatever I've got to do, because I can't live around these kind of people. Yeah. And I'm not built like that to be around sex offenders. That's yeah, fucked. Women is fucked. So then anyway, there was this woman there that I had my fucking eye on that I couldn't cope with for the whole two weeks. One of the reasons why I had to, I, was, I couldn't sleep at night. I've got to get off here, I've got to get off here. Marie Raisin, she... Uh, What's her name? Is that a name? Marie Raisin, yeah. You can see it if you go into my link, my link tree on my bio on my on my TikTok. Um, it's got the articles there. Um, she sex she was a nursery worker. She sexually abused children. Uh, one of them as young as nine years old. Uh, you know, it's, it's fucked. You can't yeah. even you it's stuff that you literally can't even comprehend as to being real. You know, women are especially with women. Like, no disrespect, but like, with women, you're supposed to be maternal, you're supposed to no, be, it's not, it's, 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 you know, it's sick. Yeah. So I just got up when they said that I won't go in, they couldn't get me off. I planned it, I got up the next morning, eight o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, I got my trainers on, I've went up there and I've just battered her, battered the fuck out. I thought, you know what, send me to the block. I thought, if this happens, you send me to the block like that, you send me to another jail like that. She'll go, up, I don't give a fuck, she's earned it, but at least I'm off it. This video is sponsored by Everything Education. Everything Education is English, maths and science classes. So if you need them in person or virtual online, they can do both. So whatever suits your preference, message them and I'm sure they'll find a solution that works around you. Yeah, has anything to do with you? Know, did they, I'm off it, yeah. What, did they kick you out? Yeah, after? I was gone. Straight to the block, straight police come, straight another six months out of prison. In your head, you're like, sweet, fuck sweet, it. Sweet, it fuck it, man. And at this point, I still thought I was going home. But I didn't give a fuck. I'm, I'm built different. I can't sit there around these kind of people and just go about my normal life hoping to get out when I'm looking at you. You're, you're next to me in the dinner queue. Like, yeah, things like that. When you've done the things that you've done, I can't cope with that kind of behaviour. Like. And the thing is, you, you're in there. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, you're a bit of a naughty girl. Yeah, yeah you've done this, you've yeah. done that, but... You shouldn't be in there next to them kind of yeah, people. Yeah, you know, like, there's levels to it. You know, there's people that have done crime and people that have had kind of certain lifestyles, but then there's people that are just, like, sick, that just shouldn't even be about. And I, sh you know, I can't be mixing with people like that. I can't be forcing me, making me live with people like that. So I had to, I'd done what I had to do. I'd done it for all the kids out here. I'd done it for all the mothers out here. I'd done it for everyone that, you know, yeah, nice. they need to be obsolete. And what's... Prison is, I've spoke to many men. I'm not sure if you've watched, I do loads of criminals, male criminals on my yeah, show. Yeah, I've seen loads of your star. Even one of your mates, Ben, he come on here, told me his situation. And I spoke to loads of guys. I get what goes on in male prisons now. Yeah, I yeah. understand it all. They do this, they have fights, they do that. But yeah. most of them tell me it's quite chilled in there. Yeah, yeah. They're like, you know, everyone kind of just settles down, yeah. does their thing and wants to do their time. Yeah. Is female prisons like that? Um, s s When you go to, old, like, say you go to ones that are like 21 plus, they are more chilled. It's kind of the youngsters, really, that have never been away before. Yeah. You know, like the teenagers, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, yeah. That's, they're the kind of ones. Well, I've been that girl before. So that is kind of crazy. Like, it is kind of crazy, yeah. But other people just want to just chill and do their bird. But ultimately, some people don't like that. Like, if you're making money, 
Some people don't like that. Or if you've got things that other people ain't got, people don't like it. Or if you're seeing a girl that they want, yeah. it's just, it is. It's pure drama. Like, it's hard to have an easy life in girls' prison. So, you've been out a year? Been out a year, yeah. I've got a question. Go. Has the man, that, that situation happened, tried reaching out? You heard anything from him yet? Uh, I believe he's passed away. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, yeah, I believe he's passed away. Okay, I'm not going to ask any more on that. I will just leave it at that. So, I don't know. A, year, a year out. Yeah. What's it like? Wild, it's crazy. Has a lot of stuff changed? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've got this kind of like imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter like, no syndrome. joke, everywhere I am, I feel like I shouldn't be there. It feels surreal. It, it, you know, I just feel out of place. I feel... I've got extreme anxiety now. Like, you must be glad to be out. I am absolutely buzzing. I can't <laughs> believe it. I had to pinch myself sometimes. I walked the O2 the other day. I sat at the top and I was sitting there with my champagne. You went on top of the O2, that yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. I was at the O2 for a concert and my brother said, do you want to walk it? I said, fuck yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. you got to be mad to do I that know. shit. I'm scared of heights, but people say to me, Nia, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I just send them the readies and we book it up. But I don't think it through. No. And then... Uh, Got to the top. Oh, God, it scared the life out of me. But finally, climbed to the top. Got to the top, got my champagne, and I was at the top, and I was looking around. I thought, Nia, you made it, man. You know? The thing is, you've done six years. Yeah. We hit six and a half years. Yeah. I hear that. But everything happens for a reason. Yeah, for sure. I'm not saying, for No sure. one's saying you deserve them six and a half yeah. years, but maybe that stopped you doing a crime that would have served you 25 100%, 100%, years. 100%, 100%. And yeah. the only way you can move forward is if you try and see it in a positive light, and you do. 100%, and I do, yeah. Like, you're sat opposite me, and you're busting jokes, you're having bad, I feel like I'm with one of the boys. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, you're not a girl who's come on here and is still pissed off at the justice nah, system. it is what it is at the end of the day. Ultimately, if you're holding on to some kind of things, you've got that bitterness and that anger and that rage in you and ultimately that's not going to help me succeed or elevate no, out here you know not. I'm out here and it's just trying to time to win and yeah so like, what is happening in your life right now then because right, we want, we all want to see you win so yeah, talk to us how are you winning that. at the minute right now so obviously I'm a, I was a hairdresser before I went away yeah. so I'm doing my hair again so I'm just blowing in that I've also um me I'm also got um, ADHD okay. since I was diagnosed in prison when I was 28. And then since then I've realized that my brother has also got it. Oh, He's wow. a fitness coach. So we've now gone in partnership and we're doing online training programs designated for people with ADHD, mm. kind of just to help them be their best self and to give them ways, tools, skills to um, elevate, be their best self, manage their, uh, manage their disability in the best way and just ultimately not let things hold them back. So that is on Instagram as two tough, t uh, with a two tough, T-U-F-F, -F, health. It'll be here, the name will be floating across the screen here anyway. Two tough health and fitness. Um, I'm also in my TikTok, it's Nia921. In my link tree there, I've got my Discord, you can sign up to the Supernova Discord. Um, I'm also doing um, a charity event coming up in June where I do, uh, I'm for the UK Hope Charity, Wicked. where I'm doing, yeah, where I'm doing a talk on my life, and it's based it's based on um, people with neurological disorders, disorders of the brain, ADHD. So I'm doing that. Um, How long did you talk for? A forty-five minutes. Shitting all. yourself? Oh, I'm absolutely <laughs> shitting. I'm like, mate, I need some Zambu for a sec. I'm nervous, mate. But uh, you know, I'm just trying to. It's for a good cause ultimately. At the end of the day, 100%. I know about it. I've lived it, and you know, I'll, I, along with the fitness um, business that I'm doing with my brother as well, I feel like it's they they combine, they go well. So I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to make noise and trying to help people. And just trying to just trying to win. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrew Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrew Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Really? You staying out of trouble? Staying out of trouble, yeah, of course. Changed your friendship circle? Yeah, I've changed everything. Good, you got Changed it. everything, changed my whole lifestyle. I, I got to the root of this shit when I was in jail. I read loads of books. You know, I've I, I done therapy. I got to the root of my soul, my character, my life, and dissected every single thing about me. I put myself back together correctly, the way I was supposed to be. And that's why I'm here now. I don't hold no bitterness. And I'm just, just, trying, to, just trying to win. Like. Do people still recognise you? 
Yeah, of course. And what's it like when, when they're recognising you like that? Do you enjoy it? Nah. It's a bit like... Ooh. Not really, yeah. <laughs> I love it when I go to places and people don't know me. Yeah, it's always good like that. You know? It always is better. People yeah. judge you on who you are now and yeah. not who you were. Exactly. But I've got all my stuff on my um, on my link tree on my TikTok. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to... Um, I do a lot of... I've got loads of podcasts and stuff like that coming up. I'm just trying to get my story out there. Trying to raise awareness of um, the ADHD and how we can kind of help people with the fitness programs because ultimately I fell off a little bit lately. I haven't been training. You know what I've been out and eating what I like, <laughs> drinking what I like. But you've got to, listen, I you always know? say to everyone, I go to gym as well. I always say to everyone, you need to enjoy yourself as of well. Of course you do. There's no point looking good if you can't enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. Time for that you shit. can look your best, but you ain't having no fun. You it's know, not so worth I fell it. off a little bit with that, but ultimately the calls, the calls and um, the, the, the motto with it all is still like loud, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to get that out there. And if there's one thing you can take away from prison, what did you, what, what would you say you learned from being in prison, being in there for six years? Because six years is a long, a long time, time, and especially in your 20s, yeah. that's your prime age. Like, yeah, exactly. So I went in when I was, oh, a million, I was 23. I was young. young get young. out, I'm a woman, I'm grown now. Shit's different. Like, you gotta carry yourself different. Life's different, it ain't a game. No more. Your last year or two was you a lot more chilled, a lot more laid back. The last year or two was crazy because our Malia was COVID, oh, so we never got out like? the cell at all. It was hell. They stopped the smoking when I was in there, so that was one thing, which was cool. Oh, and Malia done me a favour, you Probably. know. And um, but then the the COVID, the last two years where we never got out the sorts, um, the cell at all. The hot, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my yeah, life. That's prison inside a prison. Yeah very very hard but then i use that as my focus to turn my pain into strength to use that time to be you know work as hard as i can feel all that pain you know there's what in life pe we distract ourselves whether it be with work relationships socializing everything everything we do is a distraction 100%. but when you're in that cell and you're in that cell for two years and you ain't got nothing and you ain't got no one and you're sitting there with nothing but yourself you have to take an honest harsh look at yourself and your life which a lot of people don't do and it was painful. But then ultimately I, I had to make a choice and say, am I gonna sit here with this pain and this bitterness? Or am I gonna rebuild myself? Or am I gonna rebuild myself and get out there and say, yeah, like, this is it, let's go, do you know what I mean? And like, while you was inside, what was giving you that drive though? Because you could have very easily just said, oh, fuck this, know. you know what? Um, it is what it is, yeah. I get in trouble, let me just live that yeah. life. Cause I know I deserve better. And I that, know I deserve better. I know I didn't. I know I've done some crazy things. But, it takes, but it, I know my heart is pure. It takes a very positive person, though, to be able to fuel that up, especially after yeah. in your head you're thinking, "What the fuck have I been given six years? Yeah, what, for what, real. what have for I real. done?" For real. Oh, uh, really, you got to take responsibility and power over your mind. You're either going to be its master or be its slave. You know what I mean? And then I just had to have a real hard chat with myself and say, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking win. Like, I'm gonna." say thanks to the judge thank you like you made me I'm not gonna be a victim you yeah know but that I mean? in itself i think out of everything i think that is what you should like be so proud of that yeah. the fact that you've overcome all of that because you could have hated that judge forever you could have sat yeah. there thinking oh, you know what? i've seen girls in there guy. fall off fall off there have been one person i've seen them after a couple of years deteriorate 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 they're finished now some of them are on the i spice. think you was the opposite you just got better and better each year yeah. probably yeah i did I think I it, sure. it, it is mad though because I've I, I can sit across you now and if you didn't tell me your story I would never have you known never it. Know, yeah. I would never even think it I know. at all. Let's don't get it twisted. I've sat opposite some people and I thought, right, this guy's a serious. Like, yeah, yeah. He's still got a bit of PTSD from this <laughs> or that. Like, yeah. Any minute now he's gonna dash the mic at <laughs> my head. But with you, you're just jokes. Like yeah, yeah. you're not holding on to any of the yeah. shit. Yeah, life's you know I mean? too short for all that. You know, life's so, because who's suffering if I'm like that? Only you. Me. Only you. I've suffered enough. It's my time now. So what's your dreams and ambitions? Then? My Come dreams on. and ambitions is just to let's build. Man a, let's manifest this it's shit. Just to build to an empire, man. Just to win. Just spread some noise. Trying to help people with my fitness programs. Help people with the, you know, like positivity, manifestation. Trying to be your best self. Don't let trauma, your life, your experiences, or anything define you. What or or what or your worth. Or where I you're trying that. to be. I respect it. You know? I respect it. Like, I can't say nothing. And just, yeah, just make it, man. Just never give up. Never give up. But the thing is, you're still young. Yeah. Don't get twisted. Six years is six years. Yeah. But. But I'm still young enough to. you still got plenty more family. years. Plenty yeah. more so years. So that's where I feel blessed as well. You know, I'm still young enough to. I can have a family if I want to. Let's just you spend. Know? You I moved can... away for six years. Light work. 
Yeah. She went on you holiday know, for six years. Changed. It is what it is. Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> so do you still talk to anyone from prison or anything like that? No, I'm not allowed. Well, you can't talk to them. Not allowed. No contact with anyone from prison. And do you know what? It's sad. What if they come out of prison or anything like that? If they're out of prison, yeah. But no one that's serving a sentence, I'm not allowed to talk to. And it's hard because... Is that a normal rule, though? As in... No. No, they can. They can do what they like, probation. But they put that on me. And uh, I've tried to argue with it because at you the end of the day... You must have met some day, friends in there. That's what I mean. At the end of the day, when you're doing a bird like that, and I'm one of my best friends in there, she's doing a 25 years for a joint enterprise murder that she didn't do, but it's a joint enterprise. So I tried to make noise on that as well. There's so many people serving life sentences for murders that they didn't commit, but ultimately they didn't report or could have foreseen happening. Therefore, they get given the life sentences. So if you so know about a murder... I'm part of the campaign, which is a joint enterprise to... So if you know about a murder mm. and you don't grasp on it... Yeah. Is that joint enterprise? Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. My so, best friend in she's doing 25 years. So let's say you killed that person there, for example, yeah? yeah? And you didn't report and it. And I just was scared and I left. You're yeah? finished. Fuck. You're well, that's at joint 20, enterprise. 25 plus. That's joint enterprise murder. Yeah. That's why they, we've got the Jengba campaign Raw. that we're part of. So it's G-E-N-G-A, joint, en joint enterprise, not guilty. Um the Jengba campaign, which is basically, is it going in parliament now, basically trying to argue the fact of all these people that are in prison serving life sentences for murders yeah, that no, that's they wrong. did not commit. That's wrong. I, I don't like, support it's, that. it's fucked. This is so fucked. So I'm just trying to, you know, just do what I can to make noise on these things for the people that have no voice. No, I, I, did, I didn't know it was that bad. I thought joint yeah. enterprises where you're joint, you're involved in it, like maybe yeah. you've... I've given you the knife and you stabbed that person. Yeah. To me, that's joint enterprise. Yeah. Not just witnessing it. Yeah, yeah. If you witness it, if you could have foreseen something happening or you know and you did not report it, you are looking at a 20, 25 plus for murder, joint enterprise. It's being argued now in parliament because there's so many people lost in the system doing 20 plus for murders that they didn't commit. So there's a lot of campaigns and stuff like that trying to go on now to kind of change the law on it. Um, but yes, it's, it's but the thing about... Is, your, your platform, you're doing well. Yeah. yeah. You are, you're doing well. You're building your platform. I've had a little stalk, don't worry about that. <laughs> and you're growing. Especially yeah. with the friends you've got around you right now. Yeah. I know a few of them. They're going to make you big. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's very good where you're coming from a place where you know you've been involved in that shit. You yeah. can, you're not just a stranger saying, oh no, I just don't support you kind of thing. You've lived that life. You've got a story to tell. Yeah. So I think it should make a massive effect to the campaign hopefully yeah, yeah hopefully. i hope so i hope so obviously normally i could i'll do my best i'm working with the uk hope charity to raise awareness of um adhd neurological mind disorders i'm signed up with the jane campaign which is a joint enterprise um not guilty to murder i'm trying to make awareness of the ipp and ultimately i'm trying to do my hair what's as the well. ipp ipp is um Basically, it's a 99-year sentence. Ben Hatchett was also had that yeah, sentence, but it's, been, it's trying to be abolished um, because it is deemed inhumane sentence. So when you get an IPP, obviously you don't serve 99 years inside. But you are you are owned for 99 years. So in the sense as if you do anything wrong, you've got a 99-year sentence? Yeah, you've got a 99-year sentence and also you would have a tariff, say you'd have, say, a two-year IPP. You'd go to prison, do your two-year IPP. I know girls in there 16, 15 years later. Still waiting for a parole and an IPP. Oh shit, so it's not, you're guaranteed leaving nah. in two years. That's why they're really trying to fight nah. it in Parliament to abolish it because they're saying it's inhumane. There's so many people yeah, in no, there that are just fucked. not getting out because there's a build up. The parole boards ain't got time for it. So you're left, you're left, you're left. And it's. So if you get IPP, that's the worst thing you can get, basically. It's the worst thing, yeah. You're, you're, it's over for you. They own you. You're, you're done. And if you, let's say I get IPP, I come out in two years' time and I get caught stealing from a shop. Am I going back in? You're going back. You could be there for another 10. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah, like, that's is. why there's so many campaigns and stuff like that now that I'm trying to kind of join up to use my platform to kind of raise some awareness on and uh, get people to kind of support the cause. Because you, you, push, you push TikTok a lot. I've yeah, seen yeah. you pushing TikTok a lot. And yeah. I think TikTok's amazing. Yeah. Like, for growth, even on my podcast and stuff, it... The reach it has yeah. is worldwide. Yeah. It's amazing. 100%. Like, so you can post a video, get a million views plus, yeah. and it can like be seen by yeah. millions of people. Yeah. So I think it's it is amazing. I think the police hate TikTok. Yeah. Because it's blowing up right now. Yeah. For and sure. I think it's pissing them the fuck yeah, off. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely getting pissed off. But I think look, it's working. Yeah. At the end of the day, what you're gonna push and the campaign you're pushing, and yeah. it's positive. It's not negative. Yeah. No one can complain about yeah. it yeah and I, you see the thing with me i don't lie about nothing 
Yeah, like, I'm real, I'm raw, like, I keep it straight. Yeah, I've done some crazy things. Yeah, this did happen or whatever. But I want to leave. That don't define who I am. This is where I've been. This is where I'm at now. This is what I'm trying to do. And just s- support the cause, man. No one's perfect out here. But it's about, it's not about what you've been through or what you've done. It's about how you let that affect you and ultimately how you define your worth as to where you go and what you get out of life. Ultimately, as much as we can have all these platforms, I believe that comes from you. Do you believe you're a winner? Yeah, no, you know what I mean? Do you believe you're going to get it? Do you believe you deserve better? If you do, don't don't give up. Like, well, look, you've got big dreams and big aspirations. Yeah, for and sure. Listen, I hope to be seeing you next year and you've gone clear. You know. Let's hope it. <laughs> But listen, Thank you. many people have watched this podcast and they're thinking, well, you know what? She really has changed her life around. Yeah. Because you have. You're not yeah. that naughty girl anymore. Yeah. As much as I want to say you done wrong, you didn't, in my eyes, do wrong. Maybe you done wrong in your past yeah. and it just caught I up have, to you. Yeah. But the situation you went away for, I don't think it was fair. Same, but yeah. But who am I? Sure. I, ain't no, I ain't no judge. Yeah, you know. You never fucking will be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, I believe everything's got a purpose. Yeah. Everything that happens in your life is meant for you. And then ultimately, you, you decide how it... But that's it a positive mindset. And you, yeah. You've got that already. So you're already halfway there. Yeah. You've got the mindset. You've got the goals. You've got the people around you, the support network. Yeah. So now you just got to put it into action and make yeah. it happen. That's it. That's it. Listen, you're going to anyway. Yeah. Listen, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. And I, I look so. forward to seeing you again. Defo. And hopefully we're going to be sat across a table with like loads of food in about 10 minutes time. Hey, you know. So, so let's make it happen. <laughs> let's do it. Guys, if you Thank enjoy- you for having me. Don't be silly. Anytime. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and make sure you go and follow her journey. All her links will be in the bio. Just go click them. It'll take you straight over to her. Yeah. Defo, Neil921. Follow me.